Hello everybody and welcome to this episode of SolidBox TV. Today we're going to be talking about the CSWP. Now what the CSWP is, is a Certified SolidWorks Professional Exam and it's really the benchmark for SolidWorks professionals. This is the next exam that you would take after the CSWA. For most hiring professionals, a CSWP on a resume is a really, really good boost. Number one, it's going to show that you're dedicated to the tools that you'll use in your profession. And number two, it's a really great way to kind of hone your skills and just become a better modeler. So this video isn't a substitution for a CSWP prep course. If you contact your VAR, there are all kinds of options for CSWP prep. What I attempt to do in this video is just give you kind of a taste of what you can expect on the CSWP when you take it yourself. So what I've done is something that every single person in the world can do, and uh, I just went to Google and Googled the word CSWP sample exam. One of the first links that came up was this PDF, so I just downloaded it, and here you have it. And if you would like to pause and read this whole front page, feel free to do that. However, it's just a little information about the test itself. What we really want is this. Right here we're given six views of a model with a bunch of dimensions, some of which are labeled with letters. We see C, B, and D, and A is right here. And basically we just have to model up this part with the information given. So here we have the missing dimensions, and then on the next page we have a whole breakdown of the initial part with the material that we have to apply to the part, as well as these missing dimensions. Here we have A, B, C, D, E, F, etc. Those all correspond to these dimensions up on this page here. Also, what's great about this sample exam is it actually is an exam. We're given questions about this part that we have to answer. The questions all revolve around finding the mass of a part, but you have to really make sure that every single parameter of the, the part is actually in place before that mass can match. So let's take a look at what else we have further on down to get an idea of what we can expect. Question two, update the parameters of the part. So we're given new dimensions. All we have to do is update those dimensions and find the mass. No big deal. Move down, update the parameters of the initial part. We're again given new parameters and it's up to us to build the part and measure the mass. So then once we get past question three, we have stage two. We make some modifications. You can see there's a cutout here and we also have a cutout in back of the part here that's a little different. So we just have to make some alterations. And then question four, we're given more parameters that we have to change find the mass of the part, question five, you get the idea. The whole intent of the exam is to be able to make different versions of this part and then measure the mass so it matches what SOLIDWORKS has. And if you see this last page, we actually have the answers and some hints here as well. So this is a really great tool, this PDF. It not only gives you the chance to model up a part from scratch, but it also lets you check your answers versus the answers that are generated by SOLIDWORKS. So I'm just gonna move this over onto my right monitor and every now and again, I'll have it pop up in a window up here or somewhere where it's out of the way so we can see the parameters that we need to actually work with. One thing I know, we're going to need to start a new part. So the very first thing that we need to do is make sure that our units of measurement match what is on the test. So under options, document properties, and units, we want to change that to millimeter, grams, and seconds. Click OK, and now we're ready to roll. Now the very first thing that I recommend doing in these CSWP or any SOLIDWORKS exams is to take note of the material and set that from the start. So I'm just going to edit that material and we just need regular alloy steel. So I'll apply that, go ahead and close it and our material for the part is set. And I'll save you the trouble of looking through each individual question. The material stays the same throughout. So that's just kind of a set and forget item, but it is very important to set it before you forget it. All right, so before we do any modeling, I do know that we have a whole bunch of letters, A, B, C, D, E, and X and Y, which are dimensions that are going to be changing throughout this test. So what I like to do is use the equations manager and tie those letters to the dimension. That way they'll be easy to change and update when we have to go through each individual question. So I use the equations manager quite frequently, so it's under my shortcuts key. That's the letter S, and there you have our equations manager. So I'm just gonna go ahead and start typing in. We have First dimension A, tab over to the next column, 213, hit tab, and then we can move on with B, which is 200, tab to create another row, and this will be C, which needs to be 170, D is 130, E is 41, and F we have is a whole wizard, so we won't worry about that one. The next one we have is a little bit different, though. 
it's x, but you can see that it's actually an equation in itself. We have the letter a, so that's the global variable a, in this case 213, divided by 3. So when we accept that, it's going to solve that equation for us automatically, 71. So that's a, 213 divided by 3. I guarantee that when you take the CSWP, you will see one variable that is an equation unto itself, maybe even two. So take note of this. Once you realize what they're asking, it's not that difficult. It's just like every other equation. You just have to be aware of how you enter into the equation manager. So finally, we have y, which is also an equation. That's b divided by 3 plus 10. And that solves to 76.666, etc. So that's all of my dimensions given to me for question one that are missing from the part. Everything else you can go ahead and assume will not change for the first few questions. So once you have these dimensions that do change, just click OK, and now we can start modeling. So I'm going to start a sketch on the top plane. I'm going to drag a center rectangle out. Hit escape to clear the tool. Shortcut key brings up my dimension tool. And now this is where we link those dimensions that we just punched into the equation manager. So since it's all highlighted blue already, the 131 that's in there, just hit equals. And you can go down to your global variables. And for the vertical wall, we want A. Enter, 213, and there you have it. So next we need to dimension this to equal B. And our sketch is fully defined. And now we need to extrude this up. So you'll notice that we have two different levels of this initial boss. It says that our thickness is going to be 25 mil with another boss that rises up another 10 millimeters to 35 mil. So we just want the base boss. So let's go ahead and just do that initial dimension of 25 and accept it. So there we have the base of our part. So next we have a rib going through the part that goes through here. Instead of starting the sketch on top, we actually have a dimension from the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and select the bottom and open up a sketch and then go back to the front and go normal to that. So now when we sketch out the profile of that rib, it'll be starting from the bottom of the part and when we dimension it, that dimension of 95 millimeters for the height will be easy to attain. So now I just sketch out that profile, hit my L key for the line tool and bring it back to get the arc and somewhere up there and then we want another horizontal line out this way. So let's add some relations. We want this line to be vertical, this line to be horizontal, and we want both of them to be equal. And now when we dimension one of these lines to be 80 mil, they will both be the correct length. So now we need to dimension the distance of this profile from the edge. So let's select this line and this line. And this is also going to be linked to a dimension. This is the C dimension. So I'll hit equals C, and that happens to be 170. And I will do the same for this one. Equals C. Now our sketch is fully defined and our dimensions are linked to that dimension letter C. So once that's all set, all we need to do is offset this profile and reverse it because we want all of our material to be inside of that dimension, that 170 dimension. The dimension of this wall needs to be 1 by 15 millimeters and accept it, hit OK. Now we just need to close off this profile. So I'm just going to single click on all these dots and that closes our profile. Now we can use the extruded boss base tool and extrude that guy up. So right now, you see it's going the wrong direction. Let's, let's reverse that direction and bump it up to 95, which is the dimension on the sheet. Hit OK, and there we have our wall. 